Um, so good morning, Chair Santos and members of the committee. My name is Alyssa Muller, and I'm the director of the Mastery Based Learning Collaborative at the State Board of Education. And I also provided staff support to the Mastery Based Learning Work Group. As Representative Santos said, today I'm here with Dr. Paul Petrie, who is a State Board of Education member and the Chancellor at WSU Everett. We are very honored to be here today with you to share about the work group's process to create a state profile of a graduate. And we will also provide an overview of the mastery-based learning work happening in the state. And just as a reminder, you did receive the mastery-based learning work group's report last month. We had four legislative members on our work group. We were very lucky to have Representative Santos on the work group since she's been such a champion for mastery-based learning in our state. And we were also pleased to have Representative Yabara on the work group. Additionally, there were members uh, representing the various levels of our education system. So we had some state level organization representatives as well as a local school board member, superintendent, principal, teacher, counselor, and most importantly, a student. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Paul Petrie, the state board's representative to the Mastery Based Learning Work Group to share some thoughts about the work. Paul? Yeah, thank you, Alyssa. Chair Santos, House Education Committee members, thank you for this opportunity to discuss Mastery Based Learning and the profile of a graduate. To start, I'd like to commend Dr. Randy Spaulding and Alyssa Mueller and the State Board of Education team for all their work through listening sessions and various meetings around the state to get input on the profile of graduate. They opened up the opportunity for students, families, and communities to give feedback on this vital initiative. Uh, Chair Santos and committee members, we see mastery-based learning as 21st century learning. We see it as being vital, of vital importance to the state of Washington because of its innovation and technology-based economy. Our current education model is more of an industrial era model of teaching and learning in which most aspects of learning are tied to units of time. Mastery-based learning, on the other hand, is not time-bound. It's focused on learning and mastery of materials and associated skills. That is a significant shift from our more passive mode of learning to a more active model. Why is this important? The importance of mastery-based learning is that it empowers the learner. It empowers the learner. It embraces students as learners and honors the knowledge they bring to the classroom and the school setting. It builds on their interests and encourages them to develop projects and to solve problems. I mentioned our current model of teaching and learning being tied to time, uh, time units and not actually actual mastery of course content. Students engaged in mastery-based learning can progress through coursework and courses upon mastery of course content and associated skills. One of the critical pieces to this approach is that it seeks to engage the learner in the educational process. It seeks to engage the learner in the educational process. I think that's so very important. When I started as a member of the Mastery Based Learning Work Group, it was a new concept to me. What I've learned since then from my colleagues in teacher education is that mastery-based learning is not a new thing. And in fact, many educators just consider mastery-based learning good teaching. I've also learned that organizations like the Aurora Institute and many of the states around the country have really worked hard to perfect mastery-based learning so we're in a good place in that we have excellent models. And so with that, I'll turn it back over to, to Alyssa. Thanks, Paul. Under mastery-based learning, students advance upon mastery of content as measured by meaningful, authentic assessments tied to state learning standards. Students take ownership of their learning and receive differentiated support based on their interests and needs. 
mastery-based learning values the learning experiences that take place in environments outside of the traditional classroom and can accommodate multiple ways to demonstrate student learning through cultural experiences like a tribal canoe journey, work-based learning experiences like internships and project-based learning where students are solving real problems in their community. Washington is taking steps to increase our capacity to move towards a more personalized learning system. You can think of this work as a way of re-examining what we are asking students to know how to do and how we ask them to demonstrate that. The mastery-based learning work group was charged by substitute Senate Bill 5249 to develop a profile of a graduate by December of 2021, describing the cross-disciplinary skills a student needs to develop by the time they graduate high school to be successful in their next steps in life, whatever those might be. You can think of the profile of a graduate as a way of enabling educators to focus on all of the important skills in the classroom we want our students to learn beyond just the academic content, like critical thinking and problem solving and financial and digital literacy, for example. The profile of a graduate will set the vision for what we require of all students, regardless of how we deliver instruction in a more traditional school or in a school that has implemented mastery-based learning. The profile is also a way to redefine more holistic graduation requirements based on what students need to know and be able to do for future success. The work group hopes that the profile of a graduate will serve as the overarching vision for our education system moving forward and as one that schools, families, and communities will embrace because they helped develop it. The work group wanted to make sure and provide a variety of ways for Washington residents to provide feedback to inform development of the profile. We hosted public listening sessions and also had a variety of state and local community-based organizations partner with us to host listening sessions with their stakeholders. We also had a statewide survey of the, available for several months um, that was available in 12 languages. And we also had some really targeted engagement with students and families of color through the Athena Group Affinity Group sessions. Um, we also had some ongoing conversations with a group of students known as the Root of Our Youth. The state board also hosted a few individual meetings with interested parents and students on behalf of the work group. Across all methods, the work group engaged with more than 40 organizations and over 500 people provided specific feedback to inform the profile of a graduate. While this is not an exhaustive list, these are just a few of the types of organizations that the work group has sought feedback from to inform Washington's profile of a graduate. The work group engaged with state agencies and committees, advocacy organizations, business and labor representatives, community-based organizations, higher education representatives, and student groups. I wanted to include just a few quotes from the other 300 responses to the Profile of a Graduate survey we received. This is more just for your reference later on since you have a copy of these slides. So before I shared Washington's profile with you, I wanted to give you just a couple of examples of profiles um, from what a local district and another state have created so you can get a sense of what um, other local um, districts and states have done. On the left, you see the profile of a graduate from Snoqualmie Valley School District here in Washington. Like most districts, Snoqualmie Valley's purpose for developing the portrait is that in addition to a rigorous academic foundation and strong subject mastery that they aspire to help all of their students gain, the portrait of a graduate focus is helping the district to really focus their attention on helping students develop the personal skills and attributes they need to be successful after high school. They developed it over the course of five months back in 2019 with several methods of hearing from their local community during the process. They've also developed a three-year plan to implement the portrait throughout the district and its curriculum. On the right, you see South Carolina's profile of the graduate. In South Carolina, conversations around new definitions of student success began at the local level. The profile of a graduate was adopted in 2013, and then five years later, South Carolina developed the competencies of the profile that you see on screen to help make the profile actionable in all schools and classrooms around the state. Each competency or interdisciplinary skill has rubrics with six levels that track student growth and readiness for post-secondary success. The state's Department of Education provides ongoing professional learning opportunities around the profile of a graduate and associated competencies, including a teacher leader fellows network to lead implementation in their own communities. 
These are just some of the skills and attributes I see listed the most in graduate profiles. You'll see that the four C's are on here as communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. Since many local districts start with these four C's and build based on what they hear from their local communities. I would also note that some pro some profiles like the state of Utah's specifically include uh, call outs to both academic skills as well as social and emotional skills. So this is the Washington profile of a graduate developed by the mastery based learning work group. This first slide of the profile shows only the larger categories of skills and attributes and how these characteristics align with the current laws around the goals for basic education and the purpose of a high school diploma. These laws already guide what students should know and be able to do by the time they graduate from high school. But the work group hopes that the profile of a graduate will really bring these laws to life and help communities understand all of the ways our education system helps develop our students as whole people beyond just their academic knowledge. So this slide shows the larger categories of skills as well as how the work group has grouped the subcategories of skills under each larger umbrella category. We've received really positive feedback on the profile of a graduate from stakeholders so far. So I'll pause just for a moment for you to kind of glance through the skills we've included. So I want to share the work group's recommendations with you from their 2021 report. This first set of recommendations are around the profile of a graduate implementation. The work group understands that it's going to take districts some time to align their work to the vision that's laid out in the profile of a graduate. However, Washington's profile is our vision for the K-12 system moving forward to better support and develop every student as a whole person and prepare them to thrive in their life after high school. So districts are strongly encouraged to begin a process to align their priorities to the profile of a graduate vision and goals. We do not believe that implementation of the profile of a graduate should be just one more thing that school districts are taking on in the midst of continuing to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. Rather, the profile of a graduate should really serve as the North Star for a school district to help them design educational experiences that will support every student in attaining the skills they will need in their journey after high school for success in post-secondary education, careers, citizenship, and lifelong learning. Each school district will be able to locally determine how to adapt their instruction to focus on developing these skills, as well as assess how students demonstrate they have gained foundational competency in each skill. One of the things the work group recommended is that a group of educators, community members, and business representatives be convened to develop some sample rubrics and other tools that districts could adapt to their local context to ease their implementation. These should provide real life examples for how schools can actualize the profile of a graduate in kindergarten, first grade, and throughout the K-12 system. We believe providing these examples and sample tools will be crucial to making the profile actionable for all schools and to our effort to use the profile of a graduate to reimagine our education system. At the student level, the high school and beyond plan will be invaluable as a tool for helping each student track their growth and the profile of a graduate characteristics and focus on what skills they need to develop for their personal goals for after high school. In order for the high school and beyond plan to fully support student learning and the profile of a graduate, the work group recommends additional work happen at the state level to make the high school and beyond plan more uniform and equitable for students. The work group also recommends that the State Board of Education formally adopt the profile of a graduate and review the profile every 10 years through a stakeholder engagement process to ensure that the skills outlined in the profile are still the top needs of the state according to all K-12 stakeholders. Shifting to the recommendations in the report around mastery-based learning, the 2021 report also builds on the 2020 report that explains in more depth how successful mastery-based learning implementation will require a variety of policy changes and other supports. For example, the need for extensive professional learning for educators to make the shift successfully to mastery-based learning. The legislature was very generous in providing some funding for the State Board of Education to provide grants to schools around implementation for mastery-based learning. So while the State Board of Education is seeking private funding to extend this effort, the State Board will also likely have continued request for ongoing funding from the legislature as we are able to demonstrate the efficacy of the program. The work group is also recommending that a standardized state format for a mastery high school transcript be developed. 
We want to balance the concerns regarding capacity of our higher education partners to evaluate mastery transcripts with the desire of mastery-based learning schools to move towards more equitable grading practices. So we recommend a phase and period for the adoption of a mastery transcript determined by the State Board of Education in consultation with higher education partners and other stakeholders. Finally, the work group also provided some recommendations to the State Board of Education for the board to consider during their work over the next year to develop recommendations to align graduation requirements to the profile of a graduate, including that students need to have graduation pathways that allow them to demonstrate in authentic ways what they are learning. Results of the State Board of Education's recent research on graduation pathways show that students, families, and educators agree that there is a need for additional pathway options that provide students with more opportunities for mastery-based learning. Students in particular have expressed a high interest for adding a mastery-based learning pathway. The work group also recommended that the State Board consider the need for creating large categories of interdisciplinary learning standards to better support mastery-based learning and um, that we explore developing a crosswalk between learning standards, subject, in, uh, subject area and credit requirements, and the competencies based on the profile to help explain what skills we expect students to gain from each of these subject area requirements laid out in our graduation requirements. So I wanna shift gears just a little bit and talk about the grant project I mentioned earlier. The Mastery Based Learning Collaborative was created as a result of the Mastery-Based Learning Workgroup's recommendations, as well as Washington's biennial budget, generously including funding for implementation of Mastery-Based Learning and school district demonstration sites. The Mastery-Based Learning Collaborative will offer professional learning to educators and support schools in implementing Mastery-Based Learning through an equity lens. Grant awardees will participate in the collaborative to share effective practices for implementing Mastery-Based Learning, and the project's overarching goal is to inform future policy by helping decision makers better understand what quality mastery-based learning looks like, how long it takes to implement, and what resources are necessary. Under the leadership of the State Board of Education and with executive partnership from our partner agencies, the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction and the Professional Educator Standards Board, the project will involve a statewide effort, including personnel at state agencies, educational service districts, community-based partners, educator preparation programs, and participating schools. We've also created the Collaborative Consulting Group as a way to expand the breadth of expertise available um, to the Mastery-Based Learning Collaborative and to act as a sounding board as we implement Mastery-Based Learning across the state. Members represent the K-12 system, higher education, industry, and community-based organizations, and we are very glad to have Representative Yabara as a member of that informal advisory group. The Mastery-Based Learning Collaborative also includes three other key groups, the participating schools, which I'll talk about some more on the next slide. The uh, several other groups include the Aurora Institute, which we've hired to be the independent evaluator for the project. They are the premier mastery-based learning organization in the country, and their work includes policy development and technical assistance, knowledge sharing from research evaluation and practice, and field building. We are also in the middle of selecting a professional learning provider through a competitive request for proposals process. We are very excited that we have 18 schools who were selected to be part of our founding cohort for this grant project, a few of which have begun implementing mastery-based learning already, um, but the majority of which are schools that are new to mastery-based learning. We envision that spring of 2022 will be a planning period and that the next two school years will be professional learning years. Educators will begin implementing their professional learning during the 2022 to 2023 school year while they learn, and they will more completely implement mastery-based learning in their classrooms by the end of the 2023 to 2024 school year. We know that full implementation for an entire school building um, may take six to eight years or more. So our goal is simply for full building implementation to really begin in earnest um, by the end of the grant project. Schools already at full building implementation when they began will have enhanced their implementation and really focused on sharing knowledge and resources with the schools newer to mastery-based learning. We've had initial meetings with our schools um, in preparation for them to start work um, extensively later this month. And all of our schools are really committed to using mastery-based learning as a strategy to close both the opportunity and resulting achievement gaps. 
We've also heard a need from our schools around specific professional learning for culturally responsive sustaining education practices. So our professional learning provider will be providing specific professional learning around culturally responsive sustaining education and specifically how to integrate these practices intentionally into mastery based learning. So just as a reminder, our state graduation requirements um, really include three major components, a student's high school and beyond plan, the credit and subject area requirements, and the graduation pathway options. We wanted to spend a little bit of time just talking about the state board's alignment work for next year. So Paul, I'm gonna hand it back over to you for this piece. Okay. As a state board, uh, a vital element of our work around mastery-based learning is aligning this new approach to our graduation requirements. The legislature charged the State Board of Education with a holistic e examination of our graduation requirements and submitting recommendations on aligning graduation requirements with the profile of a graduate. The State Board has taken up that charge and plans to have those recommendations to the state legislature in December of this year. In developing our recommendations, the state board is required to first consider the relationship between credits and core subject area requirements. Second, the potential changes to those re requirements. And then finally, how the various components of the di diploma can work together better as a system. Let me wrap up by saying that the profile of a graduate will play a central role in developing our recommendations because they unify our current mode of instruction with mastery-based learning, something that Alyssa alluded to earlier. And in fact, we call it our North Star because it is something that we need as a state. The profile of a graduate has helped us to define those things that are at the core of what we want for each and every one of our graduates in the state of Washington. The other important aspect of the profile is defining a standard set of outcomes we want for our students, regardless of whether they are getting traditional or mastery-based learning instruction. So we look forward to engaging in this work over the next year, and we'll look to members of this committee to help inform that work. 